Did you know that as of 2023, one in 36 children are diagnosed with autism in the U.S.? That's according to the CDC. And according to the World Health Organization, about one in 100 worldwide are diagnosed with autism. But what is autism and how do we define it? Hi, I'm Shira. And I'm Shana. We are behavior analysts that create weekly content about how how to teach kids with autism so that they make real progress. And we create shareable resources to make your job just a little easier. Today's topic is all about what is autism. And if you want more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated on new video releases. So when I got into this field in 1997, I think the rate of autism was around a hun- one and a thousand. Nobody really knew what autism was. Uh, there was a movie that had just come out called Rain Man with Dustin Hoffman in it. And I would tell people what I did for a living and people would say, oh, autism, is that like Rain Man? And now everyone seems to know someone with autism. And what autism really is, is a different way of thinking. The people that we know and that we work with and that we've encountered with autism are really amazing. And a lot of them have really, really great strengths. And a lot of them just think differently. They see the world differently. They experience things differently from a sensory perspective. And they really have a lot of strengths. So technically, in technical terms, let's define autism. So there's something called the DSM-5. It's called the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, fifth edition. And in the fifth edition, which is the most current edition, there's three levels of autism. It's classified as a spectrum. And we can talk about those three levels, but let's talk about the DSM-4 for a minute. So, you know, in the previous diagnostic manual, autism was pulled out into four different categories. So there was autism, but there was also childhood disintegrative disorder. There was something called pervasive developmental disorder, not otherwise specified. And there was something called Asperger's syndrome. Now those don't exist anymore under the current DSM-5. It is just one big spectrum with three levels of severity. So level one is somebody who's quote unquote requiring support. So someone who would get a level one diagnosis typically speaks in full sentences. Um, They may have hit most developmental markers, but have some social deficits. So understanding nonverbal cues, difficulty initiating and maintaining a conversation. Um, And the behavioral piece of it may, may exhibit in some inflexibility. So they have difficulty like transitioning between activities, uh, changes in schedules might be hard, especially if it's a surprise. They may have difficulty with like executive functioning skills like organization and planning. Um, And there's, there's a lot of people that we know who probably fall into this category. So level two is the next category called, you know, they they quote unquote call it requiring substantial support. And that's really language impairments, right? So these individuals can talk typically or communicate somehow. They communicate usually in short phrases. Um, There's social impairments, more social impairments than in level one. Um, Probably very narrowed interests as well. Um, You know, they are very interested in, you know, very narrow topics and only a few of them. Um, Difficulty coping with change can also be a marker of level two autism. Spectrum disorder, um, also restricted uh, repetitive behaviors, meaning they may do some of the same things over and over again. And for individuals in level one or two, sometimes those narrowed interests really work to their advantage. They can become really good at something because they can hyper focus on that one thing. Um, Some people with autism that we know even show like a genius in one area. And so that really can work to their advantage. So that is not always, you know, a negative thing. Um, someone in level three is somebody who would be requiring very substantial support. So these are people we see with like severe deficits in verbal and nonverbal communication. So they may not be able to vocalize. Um, they may have to use other forms of communication that need to be taught to them. Social communication is very challenging for them. They're not interested in social interaction, rather be by themselves. Um, They're showing real severe language delays in both uh, understanding language and expressing language. Um, There's a strong inflexibility of behavior. This is where we might see like real meltdowns, Um, some self-injurious behavior, some unfortunately aggressive behavior due to that inflexibility, really not being able to tolerate change or being able to tolerate certain settings or environments. 
um, really hard time with change. And, and we see a lot of res restricted and repetitive behavior. Um, and at this level, it's really only a problem when it interferes with their functioning. So we're talking about repetitive behaviors that have an impact in their daily functioning. Um, and they have a hard time really going from one activity to the next. And so these individuals do require a lot of support to get through you know, their daily activities. So it's important to remember that autism is a spectrum, right? So we just described levels one through three, level one being just, you know, very, very mild support needed, right? Um, and level three is, you know, the complete opposite requiring very substantial support that, you know, many of these individuals can't function in society without some help. Um, the other way that autism can be classified is with uh, behavioral excesses and behavioral deficits. And what do we mean by this? So let's talk about behavioral behavioral excesses first. So things like disruptive behavior. Disruptive behavior could be tantrums. It could be physical aggression, self-injurious behavior, um, some property destruction. Now, a lot of these behaviors typically happen for a reason. Um, many times these individuals can't communicate. And I can, can't even imagine if I couldn't communicate, I would be extremely frustrated too. Um, so this disruptive behavior may exist because of the lack of communication skills. So the other access that we see would be some stereotypical behavior. So that's where we get, we'll see stimming, um, humming, echolalia, a lot of touching, mouthing, things like that, that don't always serve a function. Like they're not always trying to tell us something, but other, it just feels good. And that's okay. Like we, you know, individuals with autism think differently, they act differently, they have different needs. So often the stereotypical behavior is totally fine. You know, like I bite my nails and I don't want anyone to stop me. Um, but sometimes it does interfere with their, you know, ability to function or their safety. Um, you know, when else, when else, whenever else we talk about behavior as well, Thinking about things like touch, like being touched. Some kids really love deep pressure and other individuals hate being touched altogether. Um, some individuals are really, really sensitive to light or sound and other individuals love really specific lights or sounds. So those behavioral excesses as well, it, you know, it's this, you know, it's this up and down motion. So like, I really love this. I really don't like this, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then we can talk about splinter skills. So like Shira mentioned before, some of these splinter skills are what make autism so unique and so exceptional. Um, things like Hyperlexia may be one of them, but might be um, also like a superior rote memory. I've got an individual I work with who has memorized all of the states and all of the capitals of those states, and not only from the U.S., but from all over the world, which is so super awesome. Um, you know, some individuals with autism can teach themselves how to read at the you know ripe old age of 18 months. Um, some individuals have an affinity towards numbers and can do mental math in their head, um, and it's phenomenal. So some of these super uh, splinter skills are what make um, people with autism genius. And the thing to remember is that any category that we're talking about or any, you know, behavior that we're referring to, every individual with autism looks completely different. And with any diagnosis of autism, it's all based on symptoms or behaviors. There's no blood test to say, yes, it's very clear you have autism or you don't. So anything that we're going to be talking about really is, could be anywhere on a spectrum. They could have no behavioral deficits and lots of behavioral excesses. They could have lots of language and really just struggle with, you know, some social cues. So there's such a spectrum that any of these could apply in any way. And it's important to remember that it's not, the diagnosis is not black or white. It's not, well, you know, yes, you do, or no, you don't. Sometimes the diagnosis really just helps people access certain resources or certain funding. It doesn't define a person. It doesn't make you who you are. It doesn't change the person that they were before they got a diagnosis. They're still the same person. And it's just the way that they can access resources might change now with the diagnosis. We talked about behavioral excesses and let's talk about some behavioral deficits. And like Shira said, these are really individualized to the learner. So, you know, if somebody has impaired language, that impaired language can impact people very differently. Uh, some people are selectively mute. Uh, some people have echolalia, which means they echo back. Some um, individuals I've worked with before can recite entire 
entire episodes of a cartoon, um, but then can't answer a question. They can't answer who they're, you know, what their name is, or, you know, they may not be able to even ask for what they want, that they want juice or they want this or they want that. Um, you know, some individuals have inappropriate inflection. And what I mean by that is that when they talk, you know, they may accent different words differently. Um, sometimes it's voice volume, sometimes it's pronunciation of words, and sometimes it's the content. So, uh, you know, an individual that I work with really likes Peppa Pig and everything revolves around Peppa Pig and every conversation has to include some character of Peppa Pig, um, which is really kind of neat. Um, other things in terms of impaired language can be receptive understanding so that um, conceptual understanding of things that expressive output some individuals um, can't label certain items or certain verbs um, they can't put together a sentence um, really impaired language that way and other individuals have no impaired language whatsoever so it really does depend on the individual for sure. Uh, there's often deficits in play. Now, this is one of the uh, characteristics of autism is that the, the deficit of the social, the social and the play. Um, so they have a hard time with interactive play very often. It's often very repetitive um, related to more of a sensory experience versus an interactive experience. There might be a lot of components of sound and touch and things that they want to experience versus um, having another person. They don't always enjoy having another person in their space. Um, and they, they might be hyper-focused on a certain activity. So they may only want to play the same thing over and over and over again um, and not really want to explore different, different opportunities in play. Um, with that being said, you know, that lots of people with autism will um, try to avoid certain social interactions because of that. Um, they are, um, you know, look like they're inattentive for certain things because they really want to avoid that. They, they don't want to do that. Um, you know, sometimes their ability to, to stay focused or stay on task um, for a specific amount of time may be impaired as well. It could be a short attention span or it could be just, I don't want to focus in on this right now, so I'm not going to. And I want to talk about some of the restricted or repetitive behavior. So very often they want to play the way they want to play. They want to keep playing with the trains and that's totally fine. As ABA professionals, we're not going to teach them to do things our way. We want to accept them for who they are. They can play for who they are. If they really enjoy that, then that's totally fine. But you know what? I want to play with them or I want to find out what's interesting about it, like how, why they find it so interesting. So one of the misconceptions is that we want to change kids' personalities. And that's very much not the case. We think our kids are amazing and the way that they play can be so interesting. I would never thought to look at the shapes that way. Um, and some of their restricted and repetitive behavior can be really cool, but sometimes if it becomes really inflexible or it's harming themselves or other people, that's when we might talk to parents, caregivers, or even the individual themselves and talk about how we can help them. Is it something that they want to change? Is it something that caregivers find really important in this child's success? We want to help them be more successful. So we're not looking at making kids look like us or reducing stereotypical behavior just because it looks different. That's very much not what we do. Um, and it's not about them, you know, looking more typical. Uh, we accept them for who they are, but sometimes those restricted and repetitive behaviors get in the way of them being as successful as they can be. And that's when we would target. So interestingly enough, people ask, you know, are there more boys diagnosed with autism? Are there more girls diagnosed with autism? Um, you know, the rate of autism is about 80% males, believe it or not, and 20% females. Nobody knows why that is yet, um, but that is a stat. Um, also, you know, anywhere from 11 to 40% of the population who are diagnosed with autism are also affected by some type of anxiety disorder. Um, and depression can also affect an estimated um, about 7% of children and 26% of adults with autism as well. So there are um, other diagnoses that go hand in hand with autism. And so that really affects how we approach our clients and how we approach, you know, choosing goals because there is so much that comes along with that diagnosis, but it's also such a wide spectrum. Like everybody is different and everybody's going to have different needs. So we don't have, you know, a cookie cutter goal of, well, you have autism, so you're going to do X, Y, and Z. Um, the way that we choose goals is very individualized. We look at the individual and we, if they, if they are, verbal and able to have that conversation, we may ask them what some of their goals are. If not, then we talk to caregivers and stakeholders, teachers, parents, things like that. 
and talk about how we're choosing goals that are not going to make this child, you know, take away their personality or make them fit in better. But we're really choosing goals that will help them be most successful Um, and trying to include the individual in that process is really important because accepting them for their differences is really that's who they are. And we're not trying to change that. We're just trying to help them be as independent and as successful as they can be. I have a former client, Shane, who we interviewed, and he talked about how ABA helped him to reach his fullest potential. You can check out that interview. We'll leave that in the chat as well. It's episode 93. So in summary today, we talked a lot about what autism is, what it might look like in your learners, and um, how ABA works with kids with autism. So click the link in and around this video to get your free autism checklist. For more information on what is autism, click the link on or around this video or in the description to claim your free autism checklist. We also encourage you to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos and leave a like and comment below if you have further questions.